Let's talk about cement now. Thrust in affordable housing, more road contracts, and overall pickup in uh, India's GDP. All these factors usually triggers for uh, triggers for cement companies to move uh, to move up with, uh, higher in this year's. But it, there seems to be a bit of an exception this year. With all the heavyweights trading with uh, cuts of at least 10 percent, this despite a recent recovery in some of them. So what's held held back some of these companies? Uh, Yash Upadhyay is standing by with details of what's going on with cement companies. Yash. Good afternoon, Harsha. So, uh, half a dozen of the cement stocks, they are trading very close to their 52-week lows. So, starting up with India Cements, that is down as much as 40% on a year-to-date basis, followed by ACC, Ambuja and uh, JK Cement, who are down in excess of 20%. And also, uh, Ultratech and Shri Cements, they are down anywhere between 13 to 13.5%. So, what explains this fall and what are the key issues that the industry is facing? Firstly, there is a clear demand supply mismatch. So, as of the latest FI18 data, the all India capacity that stands at about 450 million tons versus the to total domestic consumption of nearly 300 million tons. So there is a 50% capacity surplus uh, with manufacturers operating at a capacity utilization level on an average of 60 to 65%. To add to this, uh, the cement companies are looking to add nearly 65 million tons in additional capacity over the next two to three years, according to a recent report by Investec, with a major share of this coming in the south region, uh, almost 61% on nearly. 39.5 million tons of that of that additional capacity would be coming there where already the operating uh, already the utilization levels are less than 50 percent so that is a neg negative and interestingly 40 uh, percent of that uh, of the planned expansion that would be brownfield in nature that means that the that the capex intensity would be lower and the timelines they would be faster as there won't be any project related delays but let's also take a look at which are the companies who are expanding their capacity and that includes the likes of ultratech now they have an existing capacity of about 67 million tons they plan to scale it up to 88 million tons by the end of this year and to 93 million tons by the end of the next year. Ambuja Cement, they are, they are going to keep their, uh, their, their capacities at the similar level, but Shri Cement, they are going for a rap rapid expansion. They have, a, they have a capacity of about 27 million tons. They plan to scale it up to 41.2 million. Ramco Cement and Shri Cement are the other two players who plan, uh, India Cement, they plan to scale up their, uh, their capacities beyond 20 million tons and, and smaller players like Sagar Cements and Star Cements. But that's not all. Pricing too has been a key issue for the industry. Now recently over the last two days we are getting reports that uh, the cement companies have hiked prices. We had a Morgan Stanley report suggesting that uh, the cement companies have raised prices by about 5 to 15 rupees per bag in the north and central region. However, if you take a look at the pricing in the longer term, you'll see that they have been on the decline since the, since the second quarter of FI18 and they have corrected by as much as 8 to 10 percent in that period. So that is one of the key re key issues that is affecting the, con the, the companies in the sector. But that's not all. Uh, you know, uh, the, the energy costs, they have been going up significantly. As you know, crude oil prices, they have, they are, they have touched fresh four and a half year highs and that has pushed uh, the retail diesel prices to an all time high in June. Now, typically the power, fuel and freight costs, they account for about 50 to 60 percent of a cement company's operating costs. So that has a negative bearing on their margins because these companies, they have not been able to easily pass on the complete uh, increase in cost. Also, let's take a look at the pet coke prices. They have also seen an increase of about 18%. So they've gone up from the levels of 7,100 rupees per ton in January to all the way up to 8,400 rupees as of May 2018. Also, the non-coking coal prices, they have increased significantly. So all of this has had a negative impact on their margins. And as I was saying, on a uh, as of their latest uh, Q4 results, we've seen that the margins have been declining gradually and on a sequential basis, we've seen that these companies' margins, they have, they have declined by about 200 to 250 basis points on an average.